Luton Town might have just gotten the best message ever because Everton and Nottingham Forest have been charged for breaching financial rules. Everton, as you guys might remember, have already been deducted 10 points. And if that happens again, and also Nottingham Forest gets those 10 points taken off, Luton Town, there might be hope for you. Yes, there really might be. Because as we speak, when we look at the league table, we see Luton Town in the 18th position with 16 points. That's not good. Nottingham Forest on 20 could potentially drop down to 10 if they get the same punishment as Everton did earlier on. No one says it is going to be exactly that way. But most importantly, if Everton get the same punishment they had before, they drop to seven points. This could save Luton Town. If you guys haven't seen Luton Town Stadium, it is... <laughs> It is tiny, bro. It is tiny. The entrance for the away fans is like one of the most hilarious ones. You can like look into the garden of people whose houses for some reason are connected to the stadium. But I love that. I absolutely love it. So for that reason, we're going to dive into a Luton Town rebuild today because if these things happen, there needs to be a proper way for Luton Town to establish themselves in the Premier League because they might be the luckiest of the bunch while others get hit with charges and potential point deductions, this team might survive. So let's help them survive for multiple season and see if we can turn them into a monster in the Premier League and Europe, potentially. So apparently this right here is the lineup that Luton Town used against Burnley in their last matchup. Adebayo up front with Clark and Townsend supporting him. On the wings, you had Ogben and Doty. In midfield, Ross Barkley and Sambi Lokonga, the Arsenal loney. Mengi is in here. I believe he used to play at Manchester United. Then you have Osho here. Bell is in that position as well. And Kaminsky in goal, who already was there for them in the championship. But looking at their stats right here, you can see Adebayo is the one with five goals. After him, it's Carlton Morris. And then it's Ross Barkley with two goals for him. Alfie Doty with five assists. He's the one getting the most, but apparently Ross Barkley has the best average rating so far. But most importantly, did you know about the story of Luton Town? I mean, back in 13-14, this team just got promoted in the National League up to EFL League 2. Then they spent four years in there. After that, they got promoted into League 1, only spent one season in there, making it back-to-back -back promotions. This is career mode stuff. And then they spent a couple of years in the Championship with constant progression and now are 18th in the Premier League. And that could be higher. You know, the teams like Everton, Nottingham Forest dropping down, Sheffield United probably not necessarily fighting for staying in the league anyways. Luton Town, man, you have a huge chance here. I mean, the story continues to become more and more crazy. And who knows if Manchester City gets one of those 115 charges uh, going at them, they might drop down too. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But man, I'm so excited about this project just because of the story. Let me know what you guys think of Luton Town. I personally fully expected them to go down this season and i think most people did but man the circumstances coming together to keep them up here there's something helping loot in town and it's beautiful to see when it comes to the highest potential in this team we are looking at players that are sadly loaned in sambi lokonga is in that top three and then you have the likes of kabore as well both players from different clubs he's gonna go back to manchester city and sambi might return to arsenal but the one that actually belongs to the club and has the highest potential is... Where is he? There he is. Teden Mengi. I remember I used him in a different career mode at some point, and he was a beast. So I'm actually very excited to have him as part of this club. He could be captain material down the line. Not the tallest lad for centre-back. Six foot tall. After him, you have the likes of Giles and Doughty with the most potential. I think they're a little bit higher up here. But none of these guys really surpass the 80s. Sambi, Mengi, and Kabore are the only ones. So clearly, we can tell that there aren't that many high potential players in here. And some of them are going to leave. So bringing in some players that can stick around for the future, that's my plan. And ideally, I want it to be players and not most people know of. 
a little bit on the down low. So how about we start off with a player that maybe only people from Austria might know. This is Rapid Wien's center back, Leopold Querfeld. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this guy in is because he has played 20 games so far this season. They are on like a winter break at the moment. Should be coming back anytime soon. But in those 20 games, he has been outstanding for them and he has gotten himself three goals. Seems to be a very exciting player that I believe many Bundesliga clubs are already linked to. So I'm very happy that I can present to you a player that probably 90% of you guys don't know. He comes in with a 69 rating. The reason why I wanted to go for him is I wanted to have a young center back line, people that can grow alongside each other. And this one was the perfect one for me. All of these guys are right footed, so I'm not going to change that. I'm also not going to go ahead and change the formation. So keep that in mind. But Querfeld comes in with 61 pace, 68 defending, 79 physicality. He's 19 years old and six foot three tall. That is the back line I'm going to be rocking in the Premier League. I know it's not going to go well. I only have 19 million to play with. So if I want to make any other changes, I have to step up my game. But this is the formation and the players that I want to rock in my first season. Currently turning Ross Barkley into a center forward. I got to say, I'm extremely worried that we're going to be going down. But... I'm going to give it a shot without making too many changes in the first season. Okay, so I did bring in Querfeld for 5.5, but I did let go of a couple of players. Lockyer, Burke, Bell, Berry, all these guys have been let go. I'm trying to get rid of all the center backs so that the youngsters do get that play time. And that has pushed us up to 22 million in the budget. Now, looking at the starting 11, I've now changed Dotti to a left midfielder. So I'm going to give him his time. But I do feel like that center midfield spot is completely open. And I can bring in someone very significant to take our team to the next level and hopefully get us some results this season to survive. One man that has transformed the Stuttgart midfield coming off the bench of Hoffenheim into a Stuttgart team who have been impressive massively with the likes of Girassi and now Denis Undav as well. Angelo Stiller, this kid is the real deal. I'm so excited about him. I thought this would be the perfect transfer to come into our team. Take this squad to the next level. Angelo Stiller is the perfect player for this. First of all, he's left-footed, so left center midfielder. He doesn't have pace in shooting, but the boy has passing, dribbling, physicality, and defending lockdown. He's six foot tall. He's 22. I've watched him a couple of times in the Bundesliga already this season, and I cannot say how impressed I am. I mean, thinking of him as a player that was on the bench at Hoffenheim, people knew he was somewhat of a talent, but his performances at Stuttgart have been incredible. So I'm so happy that I can upgrade that midfield position big time with someone that is going to support us, especially defensively, but also with great passing play. The season is finished and Luton Town survived so narrowly. Just one spot, maybe even just one point would have made the difference right here, but it is the goal difference itself. We have minus 22, they have minus 28. Brentford, Burnley and Sheffield are going down. Luton Town lives to see another day. And then we have Manchester City winning the title. And funnily enough, as I was simulating through the season, I did actually see that we beat Manchester City and Arsenal in April. That month right there might have saved us. We managed to get ourselves at least 10 points right there that is huge if you consider that we only have like 32 so that was a probably the best month for us i'm extremely excited about the fact that this team survived ratings wise we're not necessarily looking at massive growth but i turned giles into a right midfielder and the boy has been flying ever since 78 rated took over that position from townsend and then took it away from the likes of Tahi Chong and never gave it back. Sambi Lokonga on a 78, he will leave us. So that sucks because he's one of the highest rated players in the team. Actually, the highest alongside Giles. And then we have Barkley, who I tried to turn into a center forward. Didn't work out. And you can see how much it didn't work out in the stats for the season. Ogben, 16 and 3. Morris, 16 and 6. That man was not in the starting 11. He probably played instead of Barkley. Adebayo has 13 goals. And then look at that. Angelo Stila, 14 assists this season. It, it really just proved that that was the right signing for us. We're going to be moving on into season two. And we are still a Premier League club with Luton Town. We are not. 
going down. As we go into season two, I'm going for a player who's rumored to join Benfica as a free agent due to his great performances in the Bundesliga. Just like Stilla, it is uh, Leandro Barrero. Yes, this guy is a big one. Leandro Barrero Martins plays for FS4 Mines. I had to pay 20 million, making him the most expensive signing for loot in town right now. And obviously, he's the one to replace Lokonga, who has left us. And he comes in with a 78, which is pretty much perfect. Again, just like Stilla, a player that can do everything, just doesn't have that much pace and shooting. He has the passing, dribbling, defending, and physicality. He comes in at the age of 24. He's 5'9", so he's shorter than Stilla. Stilla can be the more physical player in that position. And he can hold it down with the passing play. So I'm very, very excited about this one coming into our club. As I do feel like this is a great player from the Bundesliga. That might be a little bit underrated. And uh, as I move forward, I do believe ideally if I want success this season, I don't need to focus on the attack. Even though the attackers might not be the highest rated players, they have delivered. So I need to focus on goalkeeper. I still have like 20 something million to spend. Kaminsky, I appreciate you, but man, we really need someone to come in there and be there for the future of this club. How about a player that is currently not getting that much playtime, but will be someone that you remember in the future? Because this is Aguirre Zabala. Now, you might not know that name because he hasn't played that many games. He might have had an odd appearance here and there for the club Athletic Bilbao. If you know about Athletic Bilbao, you know that they only bring in Basque players. So... He is the one to take over that goalkeeping, goalkeeping position after Unai Simon, the current Spain national team goalkeeper, moves away probably for a lot of money. Unai Simon has been linked to multiple clubs before and I do see him leaving. At the end of last season, I believe Aguirre Zabala was given a couple of games to play and he did impress. So he is now my new number one. He might not be higher rated. It's the same rating, actually. Lovely. I was thinking maybe he's a 74. He comes in with really good stats. He is six foot two tall. He's only 23. So the future of loot in town is in his hands from now on. I am so happy that I'm bringing in a player that probably none of you guys know of. This is a player that plays in the Belgian league. If you know him, you are a real one. This is a player that has come in from the Swiss division, I believe, from Lugano. Has joined Union Saint-Gilloise, who have been just the sensational story in the past years in Belgium. And this season, in 14 games where he started and 7 where he came off the bench, he managed to get himself 15 goals and 2 assists. This is Mohamed Amoura. I only had to pay 4 million for him. This could be a perfect Luton Town signing. Barkley, get the hell out of here. It is time for Amoura. And in that position, he actually goes up in his rating as far as I know. If he doesn't, that's fine as well. But this guy's a left footer with lots of pace, good shooting, good dribbling, a couple of play styles on him as well. If we can get this guy to a high rating, I know already he's going to be insane in game. He's five foot seven. I, he's from Algeria. This could basically be my Riyad Mahrez but a little bit more centrally positioned. Remember when Leeds United's record signing absolutely flopped? Well, that man was Georgino Rutter coming in from the likes of Hoffenheim. I saw him play in the Bundesliga and I was very impressed about the physicality of the player, about his ability to get past players, his intelligence at points, but sometimes he came across very immature. And then when he played for Leeds United, the first couple of games, it just didn't work out. But once they dropped into the championship, this man has been able to get himself five goals and nine assists in the past six months. So I am very happy to bring him in as possibly our new striker. I was able to sell a couple more players like Ross Barkley and also Kaminsky, I believe, to go ahead and bring him in into this squad. So Adebayo, you will now have proper competition. There's a 76 rated striker coming in. If you want to fight for your spot, do so. But Ruta is here. And he might be here to stay for a long time. 79 pace, 74 shooting, 81 dribbling, 4 star, 5 star, a couple of play styles as well. This guy is going to be the one to hopefully help us avoid relegation for another season because we weren't necessarily able to upgrade the team in massive ways. We only brought in a few pieces who we believe in and uh, that should hopefully go up in rating and make things easier. The second season has come to an end and I really hope we survived again. Wow. Bro, 
It's too close for comfort. 37 points. Just one more point and Wolves. Wolves, Crystal Palace and Middlesbrough are going down. I'm sorry, lads. I had to do it to you. It's been years of just going ahead and fighting against relegation, which I kind of like because I've been just fighting for trophies for so many times with these teams. I like that I'm in this situation for two seasons. I changed Amura into a center forward and my God, he's gone up to a 78. Okay, so Ruta is doing well. Ogben will be replaced next season. He's going to become a backup for us. Giles, Barrero, Martins, and Stilla are, uh, Stilla are looking great. Dalti on a 78. Querfeld, Osho, Mengi. And then we have an injury to Aguirre Zabala. Sorry, Aguirre Zabala. That man is out for how long? How long is he out for? Five more weeks. Oh, wow. He must have uh, missed a bunch of games. He still played 35, so that's good. We had Tim Krul as a backup. And the new signing scored the most goals, plus six this season. He is now 25 years old. I love that amount of growth in him. Ruta with 11 and 7, Ogben with 10 and 4, Chong off the bench with 5 and 5. Really good performances overall, but again, we just barely avoided relegation. And I'm just thinking, is it, is it the fact that we don't necessarily have the highest rated defenders now? I want to keep Mengi here. Osho is 26. Hmm. Maybe I'll involve him in a deal and just bring in an absolute leader into that centre-back position so that Querfeld and Mengi can learn from that man. And that could improve us massively and then the other centre-forward as well. So two positions that we can definitely improve in the upcoming season. All depends on the budget though. All right, here's the deal. We didn't have enough money to actually go ahead and bring in a bunch of star players. So I had to sell a couple. I'm sorry. Chong is gone. 14.3. Osho is gone for 11.8, Adebayo is gone for 11.5, and Brown has left for 2.6, resulting in a budget that can definitely strengthen this team to a level where we become a mid-table squad. 95 million to spend on those two positions. I think that was the right decision to make for the future of loot in town. Let's now make sure we do actually bring in the right players. One of the centre-back talents that is absolute class, but sadly picks up way too many injuries. I'm going in into the injury roulette with Fofana to lead the back line. People might have already forgotten this guy because he just, he pops up, plays a couple of games, looks class, and gets injured. So, Wesley Fofana is now joining us from the likes of Chelsea. Hopefully, he can establish himself at Luton Town and not actually get injured constantly because I will need him. He comes in with a rating of 81. He will be the leader of that back line at six foot three. The Frenchman is going to lead on Mengi and Querfeld as we go into this season. I do believe that is going to heavily improve our defensive performances, which have been lackluster. And now I can spend the rest of my money onto that center forward spot, which I don't know how much money I have left. I did spend quite a decent chunk on Fofana. I have 58 million left. I could go really big on this one. Up next, I've gone for that man, Andrea Colpani. Sorry, don't have the cutscene because I messed up. But Andrea Colpani comes in at a 79 rating. He's valued at 22 million. He's a center forward, six foot tall, left footed. And in the Serie A for Monza, he has been one of the more exciting players. That man has six goals and one assist in the last six months for his side. He will be taking over the left center forward position because Amura is left footed as well, but has a five star weak foot by now. And if we compare both of them, he has better passing, better defending and physicality, which also makes him a great all-rounder. He can play in that center, uh, center midfield position and only gets a minus one. So if you guys are looking for someone that you can basically train into any different position, Kolpani might be your guy. And as I said before, I'm very impressed by what he's been able uh, to pull off for Monza lately. Now, in the past couple of games, he hasn't been able to get goals or assists, but he is one that they look at to go ahead and get things done for them. And now, I hope he's going to be one of those players for us. Just one rating above Amora fits in perfectly into this squad. Only cost me 25 million, which then again left me with a decent chunk. Yes, he left us with 28 million to play with. But I got to say, I'm very happy with how the team is looking right now. Potentially next season, we might be making some other decisions for the starting 11. But for now, let's see what this team can achieve. Mid-table would be amazing. All right, so this season is much better than before, but it's no top 10. Mid-table, I mean, technically, we're not too far away from it. But 14th with 43 points. We have been working our way up ever so slowly. 
but that's okay because these players it needed time and now only now we have everyone above 80 and this is now pushing us into a position where we can slowly expect mid-table finishes and maybe even Europe if these guys keep going. So we have Ruta on an 83, Amura 82, Kolpani 82, Dotti on an 80, Giles on an 84, Barrero and Stilla looking solid. Defensively, we are also looking very, very good. And the goalkeeper has gone up to an 82, which is obviously extremely important. And performance-wise, I'm assuming these lads have done really well. Amura again, 18 and 5. He's growing so nice, man. Plus 4 again. Ruta with the 11 and 5. Kolpani, 9 and 5. Barrero Martins, Dotti, everyone getting involved in the goals. Stiller only with a 2 and 2. He seems to be the captain of the team right now. That's fine with me. And uh, yeah, it is, it is okay. We don't have to rush things. Loot in town. Take it at your pace, but... Just progression, as we saw earlier on in the video, where I showed how they went from National League into Premier League football. It's all about the right timing and consistently improving. And I feel like we have done exactly that with this starting 11. Moving forward, definitely, we need to get a better bench. So hopefully, I will actually use my brain to do so. You don't have one. Remember the name of the man walking into the club right now. This is one for the future, not someone that is going to go into the starting 11. 15.1 million to Manchester United, but he actually belongs to Club Bruges. Club Bruges are bringing out a bunch of youngsters that are looking incredible right now, with Spielers being one of them. He now comes in at a rating of 76. Oh my god. He might be able to compete for a position soon, but 81 pace, 75 defending, 75 physicality, 6 for 2 from Belgium. Club Bruges don't only have him, they also have Sabe, if I'm not mistaken, and they also have the Kuiper. They have the likes of, uh, who's the Danish forward? Skov? Was it Skov Olsen or something? They have a bunch of young players that are incredible. So he is now joining us to strengthen the bench and give us a little bit of depth. And that is exactly what I'm after in this season. And I have a budget of 70 million to bring in even more. In walks the next defender, Mauro Perkovic. If you guys have seen one of the shorts I uploaded lately, he was part of it. This guy is basically Guardiol 2.0. He is the one that Dinamo Zagreb are building up to become that player that can sell on for a lot of money. He comes in with a 74 rating, lots of pace, 71 defending, 81 physicality. He's the left-footed version of that lad right there. So very happy with this purchase. We have Morris and Ogben to cover the striking and center forward positions. We have Perkovic and Spielers for the defense. Now I need to bring in a winger at least and some players for the midfield as well. Up next, a player I probably paid too much for and someone that is currently injured in real life, but a player that I respect a lot. It is Sven Minans coming in from Azad Alkmaar. I, I mean, I don't know why I paid 20 for this one probably gonna be a bad oh oh that is not a bad amount to pay the guy comes in at a 79 rating 20 million is totally fine he's gonna take over as the substitute for Barrero and Stiller if needed this is someone that can go ahead and move the ball forward very nicely create chances and also find himself in spots to score goals as well left footed very tall six foot three so Sven Minans is the one I'm bringing in and sadly I do actually not have any more money so boys Go get the job done. Get me close to European football. 2027 this season is over once again. And we are looking at a team that finished in sixth. Let's go, dude. That is going to get us European football. Now, I was a little bit worried going into this season that it would only be like a ninth position. But progression has kept going. Manchester City on 95, winning the league title. Loot in town. Now, playing with the big boys in the big leagues. Now we have Ritter on an 86, Amura on an 87, deserved. He seems to score all the goals. Giles on an 87 as well. Or is it like Gini? What is it? Is it England? English? Yeah, he's English. I mean, hopefully it is Giles. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name. Kolpani on an 85, Dotti 82. Ooh, maybe I need to change something there. We have Stiller on an 83, Martins on an 85. Mengi looking solid for Fana, obviously leading the line. Querfeld is the lowest rated one, but that's okay. He's still very young, 23 only. Aguirre Zabala on an 86, which definitely makes a difference. And our bench is looking incredibly solid with Sven Minans. Very happy about being part of this team. I believe he played a bunch of the games and might have stolen a little bit of playtime. Oh, not just a little bit. This man has been stealing all the playtime. He played more than any other of our center midfielders. That was not supposed to happen. But he got 15 goals and 7 assists. So can I complain? 
probably not. He was our top, like second top player in the team. Druta with 19 and 8. Amura with 13 and 2. Kolpani 10 and 8. Good stuff. Definitely. It seems like so many people got involved in scoring goals for us. From competition, sometimes it's key to go ahead and achieve what we have achieved this season. Now I am thinking, next season, is there anything I would like to improve? I gotta say, it would be fun to bring in a super high profile left midfielder. I know the rest of the team, we have gone ahead and brought in a couple of players like Amura, like the likes of Querfeld, like the likes of Barrero and Stilla. We have brought these guys in who are not necessarily like the top, top talents, but at this point, we have 87 rated players in our team and we're gonna be playing Europe. So. We can maybe sign at least one high profile player just like Fofana for that left midfield position. Actually, you know what? This guy is not that high profile yet. So I'm actually very happy about this signing, but he is definitely one of the most exciting players coming out of Spain. I already watched him in the second division in Spain last season playing for Las Palmas and he was like on the verge of getting that play time. Oh no. That actually just, oh mate. I had made an offer for him. And somehow they came back with a counter offer, including Ruta. I'm going to fix that. That was not supposed to happen. But Molero comes into the team. He will take over that left midfield position. Ah, that is so dumb. Uh, that's just a humble mistake that I'm going to fix in just a second. But Molero comes in with 90 pace, 73 shooting, 81 passing, 87 dribbling. Obviously, I'm not paying 85 million plus Ruta for this kid. Ah, oh, anyways, I'm going to fix that. Don't worry. Uh, Ruta is going to be back. I cannot ruin my rebuild by just making a simple mistake like that. So we'll bring him back. But Molero is here. He is looking amazing in terms of what he can do on the pitch. I think this guy could take us to yet another level higher. The season has gone well. We are second. Luton Town, 71 points. Manchester City, 78. But that is not all. We are in the FA Cup final. First against second. The battle continues right there. And we could be going ahead and beating them. Please make it happen. They do have a ridiculous team. But I trust my boys. And they win. Yes. In extra time. Kolpani scores. Takes his shirt off. Gets his second yellow. And leaves us down to 10 men. That's what I'm going to tell myself right there. But lads, we have won the FA Cup. That is a big trophy for Luton Town. The team that has pulled it off, though, it is looking very good. Ruta on an 89, Colpani, Amora as well, Giles as well, Molero 88. Midfielders looking solid. Defensively, we look insane. I've brought in the best coaches now to be able to take this team to that next level. But man, even the players on a bench, Perkovic and Spielers are also looking good. Amora 32 and 7. This guy never stops. Ruta 30 and 7. Ogben 17 and 5 off the bench. Kolpani 11 and 3. Not doing as well as someone off the bench. That is not okay. Hopefully, they'll be doing better next time. Molero though coming in with 8 and 9. And other midfielders performing just as well. Man, I, I'm worried about this formation when I go into gameplay. I always struggle with three at the back. But sometimes having certain center backs in terms of like gameplay, the way they feel, I feel invincible. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this team is going to play once we get to that spot. But having come in second and also having won the FA Cup, that is huge. So this team now is on that top, top tier level. And that means Champions League football is coming our way. We seem to be dominating everyone that is coming across us. I am only sitting, seeing victories. Inter, Real Madrid, and now Atletico Madrid all kicked out of the Champions League as we go towards a Champions League final but get beaten by Chelsea. Okay, but we did beat Manchester City in the league. And we have been beating multiple teams. Is there a chance for a massive double for the likes of Luton Town? Please, come on, Luton. Progression up until the first position. Luton Town on 83 points. Get in there. That's it. That's what we worked for this whole time. Multiple seasons in the Prem, but it took us that long to build this team. And, mate, it is such a good team. I mean, midfield very solid, extremely well-rounded. Defensively, a bunch of youngsters paired up with Fofana, who has that experience, but then also was injured constantly. But for us, he hasn't been, which is amazing. And then we have 
Giles, the original from the team. Amora from Union saint gilles We have Ruta up top from Leeds United, who has been doing really well this season in the Championship, now performing for us in the Prem and Champions League. Kolpani from Monza, who have been a very interesting team to watch this season. Alongside him, there is definitely Di Gregorio, the goalkeeper, who I really like from that team. And then Molero from Las Palmas last season, the second division this season in the top division. This is a beautiful side that we have put together with a really good bench as well in certain positions. And now it is time to see the stats. 26 and 6, Amora. He is the one again. Uh, Ruta with 24 and 10, Kolpani performing. Giles getting 14 assists, which is the most. But what I really like about this team, we have a bunch of scorers. It's not just the striker by himself. It's the entire team just chiming in and getting things done. And now it is up against Bayern Munich. And Bayern are coming in with Kovacevic up top. I'm assuming that is a regen. Musiala, Sane, Carlos. Who is that Carlos on the left? Bennett. Akanji, Konate, Arnau Martinez, Unai Simon. It is going to be Ariza Balaga up against Unai Simon. Well, the two Athletic Bilbao goalkeepers are matching up now. We're going to play this game and hopefully come out victorious. That's the trophy I want. Give it to me right now. Let's step onto the pitch and see what we got. It is Luton Town against Bayern Munich. Ritter and the boys. It is a very offensive formation. Three at the back. Fofana leading the back line. Hopefully, it's all going to work out into our favor. If it doesn't, it's going to be sad. But here goes Molero. Straight away getting fouled. Into Colpani. Left foot. Shot. Saved. Back into the middle. Shot. Saved again. Musiala just dribbling. Musiala again. Bro, what is he doing? What is he doing to my defense? It's 1-0. <sighs> Jamal Musiala is just... I don't know how to get the ball off of him. He's just so good with his dribbling. It's near impossible to get the ball. 1-0. Kovacevic, the regen, scores for Bayern Munich. We were the first ones to have a chance, but they're the first ones to score. All the way on the left, there's a little bit of space. Kolpani open. Kolpani this time will try near post. Again saved. Barrero Martins. Go on. Kolpani... Oh my god, bro. Hits the post. <laughs> what the hell? Unai Simon getting lucky. As long as Musiala isn't on the ball, it's all good. Oh no. Oh my god. <sighs> Nearly conceded. What? Oh my god. We gave away a pen. This is it. We're going to lose this. I can't believe it. Luton Town, I'm so sorry. For conceding two. I was, I just wanted to say, for saving this, let's go. But no, we are down 2-0. Despite having more chances so far. This is ridiculous. Oh my god, what the hell did he just do? I'm falling apart. I'm actually falling apart. <sighs> Nearly conceded another one there. Still might. Still might, bro. Still might. How do I sort this out? Giles, nice move. Running down the wing. Cuts in, loses the ball. Or does he? No, he doesn't. Amora. Please. Let's go. Oh, this is so crucial. Kolpani finally scores 2-1. 49th minute. Just a few minutes into the second half. This will give us enough hope for the rest of the game. Giles, that goal is on you. Thank you so much. Amora gets his assist. That might have been his first touch in the game. I'm not even kidding. I've not been able to play the passes down that right-hand side yet, but finally it worked out. Yes, down the right again. Amora looking for Ruta. Beautiful pass. Ruta into the middle again. It's Kolpani. It's Amora. Shoot, what are you waiting for? Nah, that is ridiculous. Oh, thank you for missing. 79, Bayern Munich. Wanted that two goal difference again, but we are getting a bit lucky here. Don't know what to do with this. Giles, Amora. Can you score from that angle? No, he cannot. All the way on the right. 92nd minute. This is it. Ruta. Near post, come on. What are you doing? I can't believe it. Oh my God, someone come close. Someone come close. I need this. Amora it is, isn't it? Amora it is. It is him pushing in. Amora, don't lose it. Penalty, ref. That's it. That's it. 
Oh, mate, I can't believe it. That last minute chance with Ruta. Bayern Munich, way too strong. Luton Town, I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. I wanted the double for you. I couldn't get it done. It's once again one of those times where it just doesn't work out. Bayern was too strong. Lads, I'm sorry for letting you down here at the end, but that's why we play an ultimate difficulty. That's why these games are always so exciting, because there's always the chance of losing. Sadly, this time, it went the way for our opponents to lift up that trophy. Luton Town, you should still be proud of yourself. You won the Premier League and you played in a Champions League final. We put you in a great spot with a great team. It just didn't work out in the end. The team was really fun to play with, but I gotta say, the formation, it seems like it kills me every time. Jamal Musiala, congratulations. You were the man of the match in my mind. I could not stop him. Have a good day, guys. See you on the next one. Take care and peace.